Thank you so much to Anna Louisa for sponsoring this video. I am so glad to be welcoming back Anna Louisa as a partner of this channel because I've worked with them countless times before and I truly love this brand. Anna Louisa is a sustainable jewellery brand who is very concerned with being earth conscious not only in creating incredible items that are meant to last for years and years but also in their entire production line whether it be their impact assessment, the carbon neutrality, where they source materials from, who's involved. There are just so many sustainable benefits when it comes to Anna Louisa's brand and it's truly one of the things that I appreciate most about the brand but not only that we do have incredible jewellery as well and I can vouch for how long this lasts because I have been wearing Anna Louisa jewellery probably for well over a year now pretty much continuously and I have had absolutely zero sign of wear on any of my pieces and I do wear them daily especially my earrings. They have started introducing silver jewellery more often which is a massive benefit for anyone who likes to choose between silver and gold. I know that my jewellery collection is growing substantially especially when you have such timeless pieces like these rings that I have and the earrings that I wear on a daily basis. I definitely recommend Anna Luisa jewellery. It would also be my go-to brand if I wanted to gift anybody jewellery too and obviously I don't want to say the dreaded c word already but Christmas is coming so if you do want to get ahead on your Christmas shopping then definitely do check them out. And I do, of course, have a discount code for you all. So if you do want to use the code Refolic through Friction 10, that will give you 20% off. So do definitely be sure to check that out. All of the information will be down below. And thank you again to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. <laughs> Hello my loves, welcome back to another vlog. I hope you're doing well and I hope that your November is off to a lovely start. As I said in my October wrap up, November TBR, some kind of video, I'm hoping to hit the ground running in November because I have already finished two books. Yes, <laughs> I have already finished two books and I'm hoping to finish two tonight. So I thought I would tell you about them before I do so. The first book that I will definitely be finishing because I'm about to listen to the final part of it is The Dark Between the Trees by Fiona Barnett. This is an arc that was very kindly sent to me by the publisher, but this is already out. This is what the cover looks like. In this one, we're following a group of five women who venture into an unexplored woodland that nobody has gone into for years and years. It's been off limits to everybody, but they want to discover the truth behind what happened to a group of soldiers who went missing in this woodland years ago. We do alternate between the two timelines and I am 44 minutes away from the end of the audiobook. I did decide to get the audiobook because I've been trying to sort out a lot of different things and just generally doing mundane organisational tasks. So I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks but I really like the audiobook for this. I'm really glad it does exist and I am really enjoying this book. I feel like it's going to land around a four star rating. I feel like it's definitely a different take on the mysterious spooky woodland story that is quite common when it comes to creepy stories and I do really like alternating between the two timelines especially because I feel like Fiona Barnett has managed to get the attitudes of those different times down pretty well. I am quite impressed by how strong the voices of all of these different characters are considering that there are so many of them especially the five women Women that you're following in the modern day timeline, seeing them bickering about what's going on and what the best solution should be, how to de-escalate every situation that they find themselves in and not being able to agree on anything or you know everybody's got a different theory, they're all there for a different reason and all have a different agendas. So seeing this group kind of fall apart let's say feels really authentic to me and definitely highlights the stress that you would have if you just didn't know what was going on but you knew that it was weird. I don't think the spooky atmosphere is as strong as I would like it to be but that could also just be because of the attitudes of the narrators that we're following and whose perspective we're kind of focusing in on at that moment because some of these characters do see it as an exciting expedition no matter how frightening it is to not understand what's going on. So it could be influenced that way but I feel like the horror aspect needed to be just turned up 
a notch, just, just a little bit, but other than that I don't really have any criticisms of it. So I will be finishing this one shortly, but I am also reading The Liminal Zone by Junji Ito, which is a manga. I for some reason thought this was a sci-fi. Um, I, t I just think the cover looks like a sci-fi, but it isn't, it's horror. This was one of those books that I pre-ordered because of the author and I didn't even bother to look at what it was about, I just knew I wanted to read it. But when I decided to pick it up yesterday I was actually pleasantly surprised because this one takes on the weeping woman ideology, so the idea of somebody being hired to grieve at somebody's funeral and to act sad. Apart from in this, because it is a horror, it's obviously amped up a bit, and if you look upon one of these weeping women you end up adopting that yourself so we're following that storyline and it is quite a short one compared to the other Junji Ito books I've got so I just thought I would pick this one up. I only read a little bit of it last night because I wanted something quick but then I ended up falling asleep quite swiftly. It was enough to pique my interest so I am hoping to again pick this up before I fall asleep tonight so I should keep you updated on that but for now I am going to finish off the last 44 minutes of this audiobook that I have and sort out my bookshelves because my bookshelves currently are a mess. <laughs> Not in the sense that they need reorganising or anything but because I work here and my shelves are here, <laughs> just sitting here, anytime I have something in my hand that I need to put down I just put them on the shelves. So I've got a whole stack of books from filming my October wrap up in front of me. I have a cup random little knickknacks, lip balms. I have a few books that I've just been kind of putting aside to show you guys because I have received them in the mail so I'll show you those in a bit but yeah I just I've been putting stuff everywhere and I need to sort it out and I do also want to do a little bit of rearranging of my desk not of this part itself although it does need tidying <laughs> but there is like a an underneath part that's only small but I've managed to cram so many things in it that I have no idea what's under there anymore so I just want to kind of clear it out and rearrange it because I have like my tech supplies and things under there and I think that my laptop could do with living under there now that I have this so yeah I just want to do a little bit of organizing I did intend for today to be like a big you know refresh of everything because it's the start of a new month and that's just how my brain works but I've honestly spent most of the day laid down because I've been having a flare-up so today has very much been a day of me alternating between activities so I had my Patreon coven call with of course my patrons early this afternoon so I had that, went and laid down for a bit went for a walk, went and laid down for a bit, made some food, went and laid down for a bit and it's just been alternating like that so I haven't really managed to be anywhere near as productive as I wanted to be but I did wash the dishes and I'm about to sort out this area so it's not all bad. <laughs> Ready to see the truth and fall. 
I wanted to very quickly check in and give you a reading update before I forget because I keep forgetting but I did manage to finish reading The Dark Between the Trees and I rated that four stars I really enjoyed it and I really liked the ending of it because it was it had a very particular tone I'm obviously not going to say what that is because spoilers but there was a very particular tone to it that was done very well and I feel like it's going to be the sort of ending that I'm not going to forget anytime soon so I really enjoyed that one I will probably have a full review on a good read soon as well if you want to check that out I did also finish reading in the Liminal Zone by Junji Ito. I did not realise that this had quite a few different stories in. I probably should have realised because I feel like a lot of his collections do so this didn't just cover the story of the Weeping Woman as I initially explained but the stories that we do have in here do seem to have a theme of emotion and things like that so I really enjoyed this one. Definitely strange and I think this might actually be up there with one of my favourite collections that I've read so far so definitely enjoyed that one. I also started my reread of The Atlas Six. I've been meaning to reread read this one for a while because I do need to read The Atlas Paradox and I read the self-published version and I don't think you have to read this version to be able to understand The Atlas Paradox if you've only read the self-published version but I just generally am bad at remembering what happened so I needed to reread it anyway so I thought I would do that. I am listening to the audiobook. I honestly don't love the narration of the audiobook but I am 100 pages into this and absolutely adoring it. I completely forgot how much I enjoyed this book but it is definitely one of my favourites. I can't remember when it was that I initially read it but it's definitely left a lasting impression Something about Olivia Blake's writing and her characters in this book is just exactly my sort of vibe. This is a Dark Academia fantasy book, although the fantasy is almost sci-fi based so you do get a little bit of everything with this book and we're following six characters who are competing for a place within the Alexandrian society but they don't realise quite how high the stakes are when they initially join so yes I am loving returning to this. I knew I would enjoy it because it's one of my favourite books but I kind of almost forgot how much I loved it so now that I'm revisiting it I'm just really happy to be back within this world, these characters, there's already so much that I forgot. Literally from page one it mentions something that I just completely forgotten about so good job I am rereading it <laughs> is all I'm gonna say but I am pretty busy over the next few days so I don't know how much reading I'm gonna get done but I am hoping to get this one done pretty quickly so that I can swiftly move on to its sequel. So yeah. <laughs> I promise I do actually move from this chair sometimes. <laughs> Well, actually, not so much this week. <laughs> I've got quite a few different projects that I'm working on at the minute and it does just mean that I am spending a lot of time looking at the screen of mine. I could probably do with less screen time because I quite literally have been sat here all day. It's currently past midnight on Thursday, well, Friday now technically. But while I've been sorting out one of the projects I have been listening to The Atlas Six and I'm now only 100 pages away from the end and I just love this book so much. It has so many references to ancient history, mythology, different sciences and it just feels like a very logical magic system because they do see it as magic and it is called that but it is very rooted in knowledge, information and it's something that I really appreciate because it just feels so satisfying to be breaking it down into something that 
everybody could potentially understand and the conversations that these characters are having about morality I just find so interesting because it brings up the idea of how unethical it can be to kind of keep information to yourself whether keeping information away from the public is actually ethical or not whether people can be trusted with that level of freedom or if it should just be reserved for a few people to make the decision for the many and just so many interesting conversation points like that that really makes you think if you want to be engaged with the book they keep referencing thought experiments and I just love that kind of thing even if I don't know what I think just hearing everyone else's opinion and like seeing the conversation bounce back and forth I just find fascinating so this is very much a me book and the relationships are just shifting constantly you see a lot of distrust because you have people with the ability to manipulate emotions or read thoughts and obviously those kinds of abilities can be very hard to trust somebody with because if you can be so easily manipulated then what are you meant to do with that? And it is just so many small intricate things like that that makes this book so fun to kind of really sink your teeth into and experience. It does feel like an experience to me so I am loving this probably even more than I did the first time around so it's definitely going to be another five star read again. I can tell you that before I've even finished it but I am hoping to finish this tomorrow so that I can finish the week off with another book ticked off and go into the weekend with a sleepy hollow vlog because that one is coming your way. Although I am working on Saturday so hopefully I will uh, get around to doing all the things that I want to do for that vlog. To be fair, not too much, it's gonna be very chill. <laughs> I do however keep getting very distracted because for some reason this little brain of mine has suddenly taken it upon itself to have a case of wanderlust apparently. I just keep looking into travel ideas. Nothing sounds more appealing to me now than literally running away and having a solo trip in a cabin in the woods somewhere over Christmas. I find Christmas so stressful nowadays, like trying to figure out what I'm meant to be doing and I just don't want to have to make that decision. I want some quiet time, but the only way that I wouldn't be upset about that is if I run away to a cabin in the woods, so um... <laughs> Unfortunately, because I don't drive, that is considerably more difficult, so doubtful it will happen, but I'm still searching, just, just out of interest. <laughs> But I just generally in my life haven't traveled too much so I feel like I've hit the point where I kind of just want to experience some things and go exploring. Which actually I feel like I low-key manifested something because rather excitingly I had the lovely people over at Trova Trip reach out and see if I would be interested in hosting a trip with them which is such an incredible experience and nothing is actually like going ahead or confirmed because a lot of this is actually going to rely on you guys so I thought I would just quickly mention it because I don't know if any of you have seen the likes of Cindy or Reagan, Monica Kim, they have done group trips before. It's basically that Trover Trip is a platform in which they arrange a travel experience in which everything is kind of combined into one so you have the travel while you're there, accommodation, an itinerary of things to do, food all covered within the price and you're basically just taken around by a guy doing all these really cool things and I cannot believe that they've reached out to see if I would be interested in doing that. Like I said nothing is actually set in stone and there's so many possibilities that I am almost overwhelmed. <laughs> it genuinely doesn't feel real that like I could host a trip with some of you guys coming along and we would just have this like incredible experience. But it does all very much depend on whether you guys would even be interested in that. I know that I'm not exactly like the travel content but we could have like a cozy reading retreat situation, we could go somewhere that's inspired by books so one idea that I threw out was going to Greece because of all the Greek mythology interests that we have around here. There are so many ideas that came to mind and I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to at least put out feelers, see if any of you guys would be interested. So there is actually a survey down below. If you enter anything into that survey, it is absolutely not like a, an obligation thing. It is just a thing of seeing if anybody would vaguely be interested, scouting for ideas, things like that. And I would really, really appreciate it if you guys could go and take a look at that because I'm intrigued. I want to know where you guys would travel to if you were given the opportunity. Like if everything was sorted out for you, where would you go? Because I feel like a lot of the stress of traveling is actually figuring out the logistics and everything. So if that's just sorted for you and you get to just basically turn up and do things that are really cool and explore this new place, that seems a lot less stressful. So yeah, I would just be intrigued anyways to know where you guys would be interested in going so yeah like I said there's a link down below and I'd really, really appreciate it if you could just take a few minutes of your time to let me be nosy basically. <laughs>
But yes, otherwise I have just been generally looking for smaller trips that I can do around Scotland, but it's not really a great time to be thinking of stuff like that because the end of the year is always inevitably the busiest time of year. So I'm just being really impatient and I'm wanting to plan all these things that I can't yet plan. <laughs> But one day, one day it shall happen. I just need to stop getting distracted because I'm actually also really in a reading mood. So if I could sit down and read instead of just spending ages looking at cabins that I can't get to, that would be great. I feel like my brain is in 70 different directions currently. So apologies if all of these updates have been scrambled, but I will be wrapping up this vlog here anyway. So I shall stop talking your ear off. But if you have made it this far, then leave a I don't know, we don't really have a specific theme for this vlog, so let's just go with a stack of books, why not? We did a bit of rearranging of these lovely things, so uh, let's go with a stack of books for the emoji for today. And of course, thank you again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. Don't forget that there is a discount code down in the description box along with the link directly to the site, so if you do want to have a snoop or have a look for some gift inspiration, that's definitely the place to go. Go and check it out you're not gonna regret it. But yes, I'm gonna love you and leave you and let get on with the rest of your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you have a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.